How safe is your spinach? With the recent outbreaks of food-related illness, you may be wondering. Stay tuned for Health Politics. Welcome to Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee, a weekly program exploring important trends in health. Most Americans are aware that raw chicken, meat, and eggs can be contaminated with bacteria that can make us sick. And most of us go to great lengths at home to protect ourselves from food-related threats. We practice proper refrigeration, we scrub our cutting boards, we wash our fruits and vegetables, and we avoid raw hamburger meat. So it can be quite disturbing when food-related disease outbreaks make headlines, as was the case with produce, in particular at the end of 2006. You may recall that Taco Bell had an outbreak of E. coli, which was eventually linked back to bagged lettuce that sickened more than 150 customers in the Midwest and East Coast in November and December. And this outbreak occurred just months after contaminated bagged spinach killed three people and sickened 200 across 26 states. If those unrelated incidents made you uncomfortable about the food you were buying at the grocery store, Consider these statistics. Overall, for 2006, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that foodborne microbes made approximately 76 million Americans sick, sent more than 300,000 to the hospital, and killed approximately 5,000. These numbers include people who were affected by bacteria and viruses hidden not only in the produce, but also growing on our meat, and floating in our dairy products, our grains, and our beverages. In such an advanced, regulated, and high-tech society as ours, how could this kind of thing happen? The answer is that no matter how many protections we put in place, food is vulnerable to contamination. Basically, the more the food is handled, cut, or broken in processing, the more opportunity there is for contamination to be introduced and for the natural skin barriers that resist contamination to be destroyed. As our society eats more and more prepared and prepackaged foods, we increase our risk of exposure to bacteria. While many kinds of prepackaged foods are culprits for contamination, it's only been recently that the packaged produce industry has become a greater contributor to the problem. Packaged produce took off in the late 90s, and fresh-cut salad sales tripled between 1997 and 2006. Over the past few years, diseases linked to produce have been on the rise, and mass processing and distribution is taking most of the blame. According to Dr. Christopher Braden from the CDC, quotes, the way produce is farmed and processed has changed. It's become more centralized and you have these huge processors and distributors that produce tens of thousands of pounds of the particular produce in a particular day. If something goes wrong with that produce, you've got a big problem, close quotes. Basically, lettuce can become contaminated in several ways, including unsanitary irrigation or exposure to floodwaters, or when animals carrying bacteria, usually E. coli, wander onto farmland. Once a single head of lettuce is contaminated, even though processing plants wash leafy greens three times in chlorinated water, it can affect multiple bags and an outbreak occurs. What's to be done? While most experts agree that it is not possible in an age of industrialized farming to totally prevent food contamination, most believe that beefing up oversight could certainly help. Currently in the United States, management of food safety is a shared affair. The Agriculture Department regulates meat, poultry, and egg products. The FDA provides oversight for produce, seafood, and everything else. Agriculture has twice the budget of the FDA's Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, in spite of the fact that the FDA oversees 80% of the nation's food products compared to agriculture's 20%. As for inspectors, the Agriculture Department has 7,700 some four times the number in the FDA. Traditionally, the FDA has relied on voluntary guidelines, such as its 1998 Guide to Minimize Microbial Food Safety Hazards for Fresh Fruit and Vegetables. 
But now, nearly a decade later, the group's own leaders acknowledge the need for new guidelines that cover mass processing and packaging, as well as corporate mega farm production. Our large-scale production and processing systems exacerbate breaks in the safety system because contaminated food can mistakenly be distributed coast to coast, literally overnight. As Dr. David Atchison, Chief Medical Officer for the FDA Food Safety Division says, quotes, I think it's fairly clear that something needs to change. Indeed, something needs to change. Bacteria clearly seem to have the upper hand on us right now. E. coli 0157H7, which comes from cow feces, is one of the worst offenders. It sickened 73,000 in 2006 and killed 61. This strain first gained steam in 1982, around the same time that cow feed shifted from hay to grains. The E. coli is relatively harmless to the cows, but it takes only a small amount to make a human sick, and once it has contaminated a crop, it's nearly impossible to wash off. With hundreds of thousands of facilities handling our produce, it's going to take a multifaceted approach to see change and improvements to food safety. Increasing the number of FDA inspectors could help in the short term, but implementing new guidelines and regulations should be the next step. Along these lines, experts have made several recommendations. In terms of preventing contamination, they say it's important to monitor the proximity between cows and fields where produce is grown. Other approaches which address the problem after contamination has occurred include heat treatment, pasteurization, and the use of irradiation. It's also important for farmers themselves to get involved. They have a vested interest in contributing to the solution. Without self-regulation, they could easily lose their market. When it comes to food safety, there's no such thing as being too careful. For Health Politics, I'm Mike McGee. Thank you for watching Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee. For more information on this topic, please visit our related web links, discussion guide, or downloadable transcript and slides. For videos and information on a variety of other health topics, visit our homepage at healthpolitics.org. If you would like to subscribe to our free weekly video, click on subscribe to Health Politics and enter your email address. Again, thank you for watching.